Hello everyone, today we're going to be having a look at the Linux based operating system Q4OS. It is a very lightweight operating system that only needs a 300MHz printing processor, 128 megs of RAM and a 3GB hard drive to actually run. It has a very small download size of only 281 megs for the 64-bit version and 315 for the 32-bit version. It is compatible with most standard desktop applications like Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, LibreOffice, VLC Media Player, just to name a few. And it is mainly op uh, advertised as a business operating system. So it is very familiar and a very good operating system. So let's dig in and do some exploring. Right, so now the installation has completed, I reckon I'll just uh, go ahead and restart the virtual machine. Close there. Right, so now we've got to the log on screen, I'll just log in. So I do like this uh, log on screen, it looks very sort of productive. <laughs> Try that again. Okay. Seems to have done it. I'll just install the English language pack. Okay, now this is a cool feature. So we can choose the desktop profile that uh, obviously I'm going to be using. I reckon I'm going to go with the fully featured one uh, because that's got basically everything on it. I'll just now speed up the video a bit. Uh, one moment. Right, so now the desktop profiler has finished doing its thing. Uh, let's just log in. So, I presume there's probably going to be some sort of restart. Here we are. Right. Okay, so now we've logged in, uh, let's just quickly install Virtual uh, Box Guest Editions. I'll just pause the video because this bit's a bit boring. Right, so an awesome feature I just noticed, uh, just checking that it's actually recording, but uh, a thing that I've just noticed, which is pretty awesome, is the fact that we don't actually need to restart the entire system. All we need to do is re-log re -log in. As you can hear this very sort of XP-esque login sounds. Right, uh, so that's fixed the resolution, uh, which is a lot better. Now let's just boot it up. So, as you may have noticed, the UI is very XP-esque in its sort of appearance. Uh, it does have some Vista and 7 features as well with this start menu, by the way that you can scroll through documents in one section of the start menu. Um, but ultimately it does, the fading of the colours and the way it's all laid out does remind me of Windows XP. So. I find that rather interesting really, I suppose it might be deliberate because uh, when this system was released it was, um, I suppose it's a bit like trying to get XP users to switch to Linux in some some format that they actually understand. Um, so yeah, I mean it's pretty interesting. Uh, another thing is the start menu, we can switch to for example the kickoff start menu. Um, and this has, well, it's very sort of, it's in a very sort of productive style thing, isn't it though? By the way that one's laid out. And we can also switch to the classic one, which if you've ever seen the Windows 95 beta uh, start menus, then this should look sort of familiar. I mean, uh, yeah, it does remind me of Windows 9X a little bit. Now, if we switch back to Bourbon, 
then uh, yeah, looks very XP esque again now. Now another thing that I've noticed is the desktop profile here. Now one thing that um, you can do with this is install a different desktop environment alongside the one you've already used in this, so you can see it here. So I'm not going to do this today because I haven't researched it enough and it could go, it could go completely wrong which would just be a bit of an embarrassment. So let's leave that exactly how it was uh, and go on to the next point. I mean this VM has 2 gigs of RAM and 10 gigs of storage so it's a pretty sort of standard XP Vista uh, machine in that sense. Um, and as you have seen before it's got a familiar installer to other Linux operating systems and as you may have seen it's very compatible with VirtualBox by the way it automatically detects that it's inside a virtual machine and has its own edition of guest editions that it quickly installs and means that you can basically get on with your work so that's pretty awesome um, and one other thing that I don't think I mentioned last time was uh, for any C or C++ developers uh, there is a new package called Q4OS-API uh, which establishes uh, Q4OS specific application binary interface that's introduced in the Orion release um, which is this one and I believe there has just the other day uh, being a new version of Q4OS released but I think I'm going to save that for a different video so we can talk about obviously what's new and what's been kept the same etc. So I believe that's basically it for this video, I mean we could take a just general look around to have a look at everything and um, well yeah all the Explorer looks the same. Chrome is obviously the same as it always is, and notice when I click on uh, something like let's do VLC Media Player. Notice it's got the, if you look closely enough, the little VLC logo before VLC actually pops up. I find that interesting how they uh, obviously managed to do that, and it's quite a clever piece of tech. Um, and I believe that is about it. Like I said, I do like this system because it's especially like the desktop profiler um, because obviously it just basically sets your PLC up for you and that's very good if you just want to get on with work and obviously explore this OS as well so I kind of like it for that feature um, and I believe that is pretty much everything talked about um, it's been a brilliant operating system this one and would I recommend using it as a day-to-day -day OS? In fact, I sort of would, yeah. It's got all the programs, LibreOffice, Google Chrome, VLC Media Player, uh, Thunderbirds, all the programs that you'd expect to have to have a usable operating system. And that is what I really like about this because it is usable and fast as well. So, I believe that just about wraps up for this video. Uh, thank you all very much for watching, and till the next video, see you later.